Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Buckeye Politics. We are officially back with a video on Ohio's elections as they are taking place tomorrow, March 19th. There's obviously a couple different primaries going around across the country tomorrow, but we're going to mostly be looking at the elections in Ohio since, well, we're, my channel is called Buckeye Politics. I know the most about these races, and these are kind of the more important races as well, especially in the U.S. Senate race, which, are, which we are going to look at first. Um, so a little bit of background, the Ohio Senate seat is currently held by Sherrod Brown. Obviously, he's the incumbent Democrat. He's been in the Senate since 2006. He's won every election by pretty sizable margins, actually. We can go look back. 2018, he beat Jim Renacci by 7 points. 2012, he beat Josh Mandel by 6 points. And in 2006, he beat Mike DeWine by 13 points. So all things considered, a very strong candidate, very well known in Ohio. Uh, this is, a, But this is a state that Donald Trump has won by sizable margins. Republicans have been doing much, much better in Ohio the last eight years or so. So a lot of people think that maybe this is the chance that Republicans have to knock off Sherrod Brown and help them take back the Senate. Um, there are three candidates running in the Republican primary. You probably already know them because this race has gotten a lot of attention in the last couple of weeks. Um, we have Matt Dolan, who is a state senator from Cuyahoga County. His family is also incredibly wealthy. They own the Cleveland Indians, now Guardians. Frank LaRose, the Secretary of State, and Bernie Marino. Um, Bernie Marino was a businessman from Ohio. He was kind of involved in Republican politics for a long time. Um, he ran for Senate in 2022, but he did not poll very well, so he dropped out early on and endorsed to J.D. Vance before the, the, the uh, debates or anything like that. Um, and Bernie Marino, kind of surprisingly, you would think maybe Frank LaRose. Um, well, Matt Dolan obviously isn't going to get a lot of support from the more, I guess you'd say, conservative Trump wing of the Republican Party since in 2022 he did run as sort of an anti-Trump but Frank LaRose you know he sort of ran as a pro-Trump candidate but pretty much everybody uh, surprisingly or, or not surprisingly I guess has co kind of coalesced around Bernie Marino on the national stage I mean Trump has endorsed Marino um, like half the U.S. Senate delegation in terms of Republicans some big names like uh, J.D. Vance, Rand Paul, Ted Cruz, Ted Budd, I mean, major Republican, Marco Rubio, um, a lot of big names in the U.S. Senate. Um, Republicans obviously have endorsed Marino, Christy Nome, a governor, quite a few members of the, um, quite a few congressmen from Ohio, as well as Lee Zeldin from New York, a whole bunch of political parties, um, Vivek Ramaswamy, Carrie Lake, Kevin Doris, Bernie Marino. Um, well, Dolan has gotten more support from, I guess you'd say, local Ohioans, but not the kind of like Ohio politicians you would think. Rob Portman, obviously the former senator, Mike DeWine, the governor, um, owner of the Cleveland Browns, former mayor of Columbus, like a state representative, uh, the Plain Dealer, which is like a Cleveland newspaper. And then LaRose has gotten a couple local officials as well. But really, there hasn't been a whole lot of excitement around LaRose from the uh, like Trump kind of base. Pretty much everyone has been going to support Bernie Marino. And despite that, uh, Matt Dolan has raised a lot of money. Um, he is very wealthy himself, and there's a lot of, like, you know, Matt Dolan has been a very interesting campaign because in 2022, he was the outspoken uh, anti-Trump candidate. You know, he was he made it very clear that, like, he, Trump was fine, but he was not going to, he was not the biggest fan of Trump. He was not going to go out of his way to, you know, please him or work with him or whatever, and that sort of worked, but obviously he still lost. Um, but he did surge a little bit because, you know, sort of those mo uh, moderate voters who are not a very big part of the electorate in Ohio, but still, you know, make a difference. They did turn out for him and supported him, but obviously he still lost to J.D. Vance. This cycle, he's actually been pretty outspokenly, um, not necessarily pro-Trump, but very conservative on the issues. I mean, his, he's ran a, all in all a pretty solid campaign because he already sort of has that kind of persona of being more moderate, more um, establishment you know, being a little bit on the issues, but he's ran his campaign focusing on immigration, on crime, and it's actually, all things considered, has really worked out for him, as we've seen here. Bernie Marino has pretty much all the national support, and he's been struggling against Matt Dolan. Early on, Frank LaRose did lead in the polls, but that was mostly from name recognition. Around November, late November, Bernie Marino pulled ahead after Trump endorsed him, and he sort of maintained a lead there, but the last few weeks or so, Matt Dolan has surged, and polls have gone back and forth. As you can see here, the most recent poll out of Emerson College came out today, actually, has Bernie Marino at 44 percent, Matt Dolan at 40 percent, and Frank LaRose at 16 percent. So LaRose has gone down quite a bit. Marino and Matt Dolan have surged. I think this race is going to be very competitive tomorrow. I really do. Um, 
I would probably have to give the edge to Bernie Marino, gun to my head. I think Marino probably pulls it off very narrowly, but I would not be surprised if Matt Dillon managed to win tomorrow either. I mean, it's really going to come down to um, which, you know, whether the conservative Marino base is more energized, whether Dolan's messaging in terms of like, um, being conservative on the issues is able to get him over the hump. Trump held a rally for Bernie Marino. Maybe that encourages some voters to turn out for Marino that originally weren't. We'll have to really just wait and see. But like I said, it's going to be a very close race tomorrow. Think uh, Pennsylvania 2022 Senate election between Dr. Oz, David McCormick, where you know we didn't know the results for a couple days. Literally like a couple hundred votes separated them. I don't know if it's going to be that close, but I could honestly see that. The county map is going to be super cursed. So, yeah, like I said, I think uh, Matt, I think Bernie Marino is probably still favored, but it is going to be very close, probably closer than uh, 2022. So now let's look at the uh, House of Representatives elections in Ohio. Um, starting off in the first district, which is in like the Cincinnati area, this was a longtime conservative district. Cincinnati has are, are always been more of a conservative part of Ohio, but recently, as with a lot of urban and suburban areas, it's sort of moved to the left. One of the few parts of Ohio that has moved more Democrat. Greg Landsman managed to win an upset election in 2022 against Steve Shabbat, who was a longtime incumbent. Orlando Sanza is the only Republican running. He's endorsed by J.D. Vance and Americans for Prosperity. It's like a conservative, like, pack um i think that greg landsman is probably going to hang on here and i mean we don't need, we already know the primary results so i'll just kind of say my general election prediction not a lot going on here obviously something could change we're still a long way out but i think greg landsman probably wins here by a couple of points but yeah we already know the nominees ohio second district this is rural southern ohio kind of like appalachia um kind of like you know south of columbus uh, east of Cincinnati kind of area, and there are a whole bunch of candidates running. The incumbent Republican is not running for re-election. This is a deep red seat. Whoever wins this primary is going to be the next congressman from this district. And as you can see here, there are a bunch of people running. Um, let's take a look at all of them. Yeah, um, at, there's obviously a lot of people running. The only people I want to highlight are Phil Heimlich, who is an outspoken anti-Trump candidate. He's been endorsed by a Democrat, the Democrat who was running for the seat dropped out and endorsed him. Adam Kinzinger, who is a very moderate to liberal Republican anti-Trumper. And basically his goal is to get Democrats to turn out to support him and hope that because so many other conservatives are running, he wins. So if you live in this district, absolutely do not vote for Phil Heimlich. Um, the only, I want to point out Tim O'Hara, who is pretty endorsed by Vivek Ramaswamy. Um, he, he has fundraised very well, and I think he's probably— possibly the favorite going into t tomorrow there's no really been no polling done so i can't say for sure but he has raised the most money he has had some very good ads he seems pretty solid on the issues he's a veteran um i think he's probably the favorite but we'll have to wait and see i also want to highlight uh kim georgetown who has not received any major endorsements on here but she is the ch uh, chair of moms for liberty in hamilton county which is in cincinnati she's run a pretty good campaign um, I don't think she's going to win tomorrow, but I do like her on the issues, and I would be very happy if she won. So if you live in that district, I encourage you to vote for either, either Kim Georgetown or Tim O'Hara. If either of them win, really if any of these candidates win except for um, uh, Phil Heimlich, it's, a, it's really fine. There's no one too spectacular, but there's just some people that are better than others. Um, but it will be interesting to see since, you know, there's so many people running. Um, the third district is a safe Democrat district in Columbus. The Democrats going to win there. We already have the candidates. Jim Jordan in the fourth district is already going to be the nominee. No one's running against him. The fifth district, um, this is sort of like, it's like Lorain counties and then stretches uh, west into farm country. Bob Ladd is the incumbent. He is facing a primary challenge, but he's still going to win handily. Same thing on the Democratic side. We already have the candidate. Uh, the 6th District, this is kind of an interesting one. This is also in Appalachian, Ohio. It's like Youngstown in the south along the Ohio River. Um, Bill Johnson was the incumbent representative. He um, retired to become president of Youngstown State University. So now we have a couple people running to replace him. Michael Ruley is a state senator from like Mahoning and Columbiana County. And Reggie Stolfus is a state representative from Stark County. Um, both the like northern part of the district. Um Michael Rooley was initially, like, the candidate a lot of people supported. It, this looked like it'd be an easy win for him, but Reggie Stolfas has ran a pretty solid campaign. He has sort of just came out of nowhere and been, you know, he's ran a solid campaign. He's fundraised very well. <coughs> 
excuse me, but I do believe that Michael Rooley is probably still going to win here. He has the name recognition. He has some major endorsements. Um, he's just more well known, and yeah, all things considered, I think Michael Rooley is going to win. Um, going down to the seventh district, we already have Max Miller, who is going to be the Republican nominee. No one's challenging him. I think he should win relatively handily. On the Democratic side, I think Matthew Deemer probably wins. He was the candidate in 2022. Ohio's eighth district, Warren Davidson. This is a safe Republican district. Warren Davidson is the incumbent. He's going to win handily. His challenger is basically a nobody. The 9th District, this is another interesting one. Marcy Kaptur is the incumbent Democrat. She's been in Congress for like 30, 40 years. Um, this district is like in northwestern Ohio, Toledo, Lake Erie er, area, kind of stretching up near Michigan. Um, initially, it looked like J.R. Majewski was going to be the Republican nominee again this cycle, but he hasn't. He had, didn't fundraise very well. He had a couple of gaffes. He just kind of struggled in the campaign. His campaign wasn't the same as it was in 2022. He, um, he didn't look very good for him, so he has dropped out and endorsed Derek Marin, who is a state representative. Um, Craig Riedel ran for this seat in 2022. He lost to Majewski in the primary. He's a former state rep- representative, and he's very—he's he's anti-Trump. He's kind of just like—he's not a very good candidate, all things considered. I think Derek Marin is going to win— um, Tomorrow, he's endorsed by Mike Johnson, Speaker of the House, Lucas County Republican Party. That's where Toledo is, Jared Majewski. And I believe Trump endorsed him as well. His Trump is, endorsement is not on here, but he did endorse him. So I think Derek Marin will get the endorsement. You look at Craig Wright, Rudell. He did get a couple in, a look at his endorsements. People are crossed out because after it came out that he was not a very big fan of Trump, um, and I believe he like supported DeSantis or something, people unendorsed him. And then obviously Majewski is withdrawn from the race. Uh, the 10th district, Mike Turner is going to win there. The Democrat, I don't, it doesn't really matter who the nominate. Probably Amy Cox is going to win. She's endorsed by the Democratic Party, but it's not really going to matter. Chantal Brown is going to win her primary. Really doesn't matter who the Republicans nominate. She'll win re-election. Um, Troy Balderson is the presumptive nominee in the 12th district. Jerry Christian is the nominee for the Democrats. Really, a lot of these races are already decided. The parties, if it's a safe district... Um, for one side or the other, the opposition is going to put just up, put up some no name, just as like uh, sacrificial lamb, basically. Um, the 13th district, this is like Akron in the su- suburbs. Amelia Sykes is the incumbent Democrat. There's really only two candidates running: uh, Chris Banweg, who is a Hudson City Councilor, and Kevin Coughlin, who was a former state senator. Um, both of them are pretty solid on the issues. Really, I don't have a pro- I don't have a problem with either of them. Chris Banweg kind of came out of nowhere. Um, kind of an unknown candidate. He was a city councilman. Usually you don't go from city council to Congress, but he's raised a lot of money. He got the endorsement of J.D. Vance, and he, there's been a lot of support for him kind of in the, on the ground here. But Kevin Coughlin does have that name recognition. Um, he's got the endorsement of Jim Jordan, Bob Gibbs, the Summit County Republican Party, which is obviously you want to have county. You want to have the county. Um, Summit County is the county that is mostly in this district. The vast majority of the district is in Summit County. Um, they have endorsed Kevin Coughlin. I think that's going to help him. Um, I think Kevin Coughlin probably wins tomorrow, but it might be closer than people expect. And either way, um, there's I don't really have an issue with either of these guys. Either one is going to be a solid nominee on the issues and against Amelia Sykes in the general. Um, the 14th district, Dave Joyce is the incumbent. It's good to see he got a couple primary challengers. This district is in north uh, eastern Ohio. It's very rural, very conservative, but it's represented by Dave Joyce, who is a uh, a rhino, all things considered. Um, he votes against, he votes for gun control, um, stuff like that. So it's good to see he's getting some primary challengers. I'd be stunned if he lost, but still, good to see that there's people that are running against him. 15th district, Mike Carey is going to win. Really doesn't matter who the Democrats put up, but Adam Miller's prob- Miller is probably going to be the nominee. And yeah, that's it. So thank you for watching this video. We did a, a pretty long run through, all things considered, of these different candidates. Hope you enjoyed. And if you live in Ohio or any of the states having elections tomorrow, uh, be sure to get out and vote. Thanks for watching and be sure to like and subscribe.